It's in your big screen. Oh, I think it's not working well. I don't know why. You can press F5. Yeah, I did. Oh, it doesn't work? Okay, it's fine. Oh, sorry for this technical problem. Uh, okay. Hello, this is team number 10, and let me start the presentation. Uh, our main topic is about unsupervised learning for RL. Oh, oh, it's not working, I think. Why is it? Oh, you should stop the presentation and. Okay. Please uh, share the entire screen, not a specific window. Okay. Yeah, okay. It, it's better. Okay. Cool. Okay. Oh, sorry. Hello, this is team number 10, and let me start the presentation. Our main topic is about unsupervised representation learning for RL. First, I'll briefly explain about reinforcement learning. In RL, an agent takes actions in an environment, and then it is interpreted into a word and a representation of the next state. In a third game, a state is equivalent to an image. Here, if the agent takes an action to go down, then the image of the next state is like the picture on the right. In other, unlike general representation learning, we have more information called action. Therefore, we assume that we can somehow utilize this sub subsidiary information. I think this is a novel idea because none of ex existing studies have been attempted this approach. Our baseline is the STDM algorithm, which magnifies mutual information of representations across spatial and temporal domains. There are two different objectives, local local informax and global local informax. We collect the data by a random agent. In our context, the positive samples correspond to pairs of consecutive observations and negative samples correspond to pairs of non-consecutive observations. And our main idea is so simple. Add an auxiliary network to predict the action. Loss function is the summation of mutual information loss with global, local, global and local features, and the maximum likelihood loss to estimating an action. Here the lambda is a hyperparameter. And we tried on three different approaches to implement it. This is our first approach. We just simply added fully connected discriminator on top of the encoder, concatenate the global features and predict the action by a fully connected layer. And second, we added an auxiliary region sensitive module to the last convolution layer of the encoder. The purpose of this module is to assign importance to the surroundings of the agent. In the region sensitive module, we employed two layers of one by one con layers and a with LU activation. Our last method is to add an attention mass module to the last convolution layer. We use the same structure as region sensitive module, but unlike method two, global features are also filtered by the attention mask. This means that we use this mask for representation learning as well. Then how could we evaluate the representations? We used a cherry annotated RAM interface presented by the baseline paper. Thanks to AARI, we can automatically output a state level for every frame generated from the game. After training the encoder, freeze encoder's weights and train a linear classifier on top of each representation for linear probing. And this table shows our results. In most games, the F1 score was improved. This emphasizes that predicting action between observations gives certain intuition on semantics of observations itself. Notably, method one outperformed other methods. This means that sophisticated methods such as ARSM and AMM do not show any performance advantage over relatively simple AFC. 
we can conclude that the bigger emphasis on and on emphasis on inference network could be detrimental. This is more detailed research of AFC. In case of PIFR, BERJERK, and BOXING, our methods increased the performance by 13, 5, and 5% respectively. And we also figured out that the performance gain varies from environment to environment. Like PIFO, when there are few uncontrollable objects, for example, a scorpion here, we can take advantage of the action trading network better. And in contrast, asteroids have multiple objects that is not affected by the agent's action. We show that utilizing subsidiary labeled data is helpful to unsupervised learning tasks. And it is also applicable to any kinds of contrast learning for RL. And this is end of my presentation, thanks. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, why do you add all, um, actually two teams, uh, why do you add this picture? <laughs> okay, uh, any question? Okay, uh, thank you for your presentation. Thanks.